binomial distribution. So here we're going to look at how we can take our Bernoulli trials and form a binomial distribution. So for Bernoulli trials, we have to have a fixed amount of trials. So let's say we have n trials. And remember, we're only going off success and failure. So if the probability of success is p, the probability of failure is 1 minus p, which we could call q. Now, both of the trials have to be, or all trials have to be independent of each other. So think about flipping a coin every time you flip the coin. Um, the, previous, the previous flips have nothing to do with each other. And that's what we mean by they have to be independent from each other. Now, if we have this, we can set up a binomial variable called x that is distributed is distributed as a binomial variable with parameters n and p where n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success now the probability that x is a certain value, we can write as the probability that x is a certain value is actually going to equal n choose x multiplied by p to the x multiplied by 1 minus p to the power of n minus x, which is actually a term in binomial theorem. Or you could write this as n choose x, p to the x times q to the n minus x, where obviously q is equal to 1 minus p. Now just some things to, to note before we get stuck into some examples, is that let's have a look at some distributions uh, for certain values. So if the probability of success is less than 0.5, we'll actually have a distribution that's positively skewed. So we'll have a positively skewed distribution if the probability is less than 0.5, which all well, your data will be bunched up at the lower end. If the probability is exactly equal to 0.5, we'll have symmetrical distribution. And if the probability is greater than 0.5, we're going to have negatively skewed distribution, which will all be bunched up at the higher end. Let's look at some examples. So if we have 20 cards, so sorry, if 20 cards are chosen, from a standard deck of 52. We want to find the, first of all, we want to find the probability of drawing exactly 10 spades. So first we have to think if this is, if this is a Bernoulli trial, and it is because we can think about drawing either a spade or not a spade. So the first thing we need to do is list our probabilities for P and Q. So P is the probability of success. And if we're gonna successfully draw a spade out of the deck, that would be a one in four chance, which means that the probability of not drawing a spade is three over four. Now, the probability that x equals exactly 10 spades is going to be, well, let's just note down our, our formula for our probability. So the value x that takes on a value of x is going to be n choose x, p to the x times 1 minus p 
to the n minus x. So plugging this in, we know x is equal to 10, and our number of trials is 20, because we're drawing 20 cards, is how many times we're doing it. So we're going to get 20 choose 10, times our probability of success, which is a quarter, to the power of x, which is 10, times our probability of failure, which is 3 over 4, times 20 minus 10. We can just use a calculator here to simplify this, and we'll get 0 0.00992 to 5 decimal places is our probability. Now, let's look at one more part for this question. And we want to know the probability of drawing exactly 15 red cards. So again, this is withdrawing 20 cards. So if we drew 20 cards, what's the probability of getting exactly 15 red ones? So again, n is 20. Our probability for success, so drawing a red card, that's just a 50-50 or a half, which means q has to also be a half. So they always have to add up to one, both our probabilities. And what's our probability if our Remember, our x is determined by red cards, and we want 15 red cards. So x is going to be 15. And this is going to equal 20 choose 15 times a half to the power of x, which is 15, times our probability of failure, which is also a half, times, sorry, to the power of 20 minus 15. And you can just go ahead and Put all that in the calculator, and you'll get 0 0.01479 to 5 decimal places. Right, let's look at one more example. So we have a tech company that sells devices that have a 3% chance of being faulty. So they have a 3% chance of being faulty which automatically just means they have a 97% chance of not being faulty. So let's note that down. And then if they sell 125 devices, we want to find a couple of probabilities. We want to find the probability that none are faulty. Okay, so let's write down a couple of things. So now our number of trials is 125, because that's how many devices they're selling. Our probability that of success, so we're going the probability that none are faulty. So we're talking about not faulty. So that's our probability of success, which is just 97 over 100. And our probability of failure ends up being 3 over 100. So now, remember our, our formula for our probability is that if x is going to be a certain value of x, we're going to have n choose x times p to the x times q to the n minus x. So here, we're after the probability of none being faulty. So We need x to equal 125 that are not faulty. We need all of them. We need, because our probability for success is them not being faulty. And if we want none faulty, we need 125 that are not faulty. So this is going to give us. 125, choose 125, times p, which is 97 over 100 to the power of x, which is 125, times q, which is 3 over 100, to the power of 
125 minus 125, which is zero. And this is going to give us 0 0.022 to three decimal places. So this is our probability of none being faulty. Now, next part, we're looking at at least one is faulty. Now the probability of at least one being faulty, usually when you see the word at least, we can think about one minus a different probability. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So one minus the complement will give us at least one being faulty. So the complement of at least one faulty is none being faulty. So it's one minus none being faulty. And we just found the probability that none of none being faulty. So it's just one minus 0 0.022, which gives us 0 0.978 to three decimal places.